Now, as further proof that time is completely meaningless in COVID world, it's been six long months already since Google spaffed out its latest flagship smartphone, the Pixel 5. So yeah, apparently time absolutely flies when you spend most of the day cowering under your duvet with your pillow pressed tight to your face, emerging only occasionally to suck scotch through a straw. Now, the Pixel 5 still costs 600 quid half a year on, which was a slightly tough sell even at launch time, given some of its competition and the fact that you could save 100 quid by just grabbing the almost as good Pixel 4a 5 G. So the question is, is the Pixel 5 even worth considering in springtime 2021 or should you be looking elsewhere for your next smartphone? Well, I've had my SIM slapped in there again for this past week. I've been using it on and off for the past six months and here's my full long-term Pixel 5 review. And for more on the latest greatest tech, please do pause, subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Now, anyone that was hoping that smartphones would start to shrink back to vaguely sane sizes in 2021 will be sorely disappointed with what they've seen. I mean, this last couple of weeks alone, I've been fondling the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra, which is a 6.81 inch behemoth, and the Infinix Hot 10S, which is infinitely huge at 6.82 inches. So swapping my SIM back to the 6 inch Pixel 5 is kind of like swapping some homemade tinfoil undercrackers for a luxury pair of velvet Y fronts. Oh my god, the comfort. I mean, sure, yeah, using the word compact to refer to anything that's six inches in size still seems kind of wrong, especially as I spent most of my teenage years convincing myself that anything over four and a half inches is bloody massive. But still, one-handed use is a dream, even with the lack of dedicated one-handed screen reduction tools here on the Pixel 5, and it will just about squeeze into your skinny jeans. Gotta admit, I was kind of hoping that Google would have released a couple of jazzy new, lighter, fresher, more vibrant models by now, but it looks like they're sticking with the Just Black and the a Strictly Sage or whatever it's called. This is the Just Black model, obviously, and I've got to admit, it's still about as exciting to look at as a four-hour documentary about 15th century agricultural methods. And I've got to admit, I'm not really a fan of the lighter Sage model either, but now that we're balls deep in springtime and the sunlight is finally starting to cut through that thick layer of cloud and penetrate into Blighty's icy plains, I'm definitely starting to notice a bit of a problem with the Just Black model. And the problem is that the Pixel 5 heats up like a motherfucker if you have it in direct sunlight for more than a few minutes so you'd better get used to seeing this here message unless you live in deepest Siberia. And as I haven't got the Sage model, I can't say for sure whether that will heat up less than the Just Black model, but here's hoping that the lighter coloration will help. Great news if you're a slippery fingered sod like my good self though, because that aluminium arse and the Gorilla Glass 6 display are as tough as Jason Momoa wearing a concrete jock strap. Now, I'm a total butterfingers these days. I've dropped this thing onto hard floor and twice in the past week alone, and so far Touchwood's still not a single scratch dent, scuff, or anything. Still in perfect nick, no bother. And one good reason to grab the Pixel 5 over that cheaper Pixel 4a 5G is the water resistance. The IPX8 design means that the Pixel 5 can be fully submerged, no worries. Great news as summer looms and us Brits will start cramming ourselves into speedos and smashing that pool bar. And at least we can always chuck the Pixel 5 in water to cool it down a bit when it gets a bit toasty. Now that gorgeous stock Android 11 experience here on the Pixel 5 has been updated with some fresh new features over the course of the last few months, although nothing particularly particularly shocking or surprising or exciting that will cause your wife runs to explode in merriment. The adaptive sound feature is one of the more interesting additions. So for instance, you could be watching some bald toss pot run in his mouth on YouTube and suddenly your sprog bursts in making a proper racket. The Pixel 5 will detect the noise and automatically adjust the speaker output so you can hear Mr. Baldy over your own infuriating offspring. It certainly ain't perfect as I still occasionally have to manually tweak the volume myself, but hopefully that's a feature that will get refined over the next few months to the point where you don't even have to look at the volume let alone touch it. And one of my personal favourite features that Google kind of ninja sneaked on this thing was the adaptive battery charging feature as well. If you go into the battery settings, you'll find it in there. And what this does when it's switched on is it trickle charges the Pixel 5 up until the moment where your alarm's due to go off, where it will hit 100%. That just pre prevents the battery from being overcharged and therefore overheating and possibly being damaged in the long term. I've seen a similar sort of feature on the likes of Sony smartphones for absolutely yonks now, so it's great to see it finally baked into Android. And Google Fit has also been updated, so it now supports, for instance, heart rate monitoring using the Pixel 5's rear camera. Very clever stuff and handy if you don't have one of those fitness trackers. And also, the front camera on the Pixel 5 can be used to measure your respiratory rate, which is proper clever clog stuff. Although Google itself is keen to point out that this is just for information purposes, and you're not given any extra information on top of that, it's literally just, here's your respiratory rate, bang, done. And of course, with the Pixel 5, you're guaranteed another couple of years of OS and security updates, uh, so happy days all around. Oh, happy days that is apart from the lack of dual sim support and also there's no micro sd memory card support either to expand the onboard storage those are both kind of 
bummers. Another bummer is the lack of a headphone jack. While the so-called stereo speaker setup is about as impressive as a fart in a jacuzzi. Just as well then that the Bluetooth connectivity is top notch so you'll still enjoy great sound and audio while you're streaming wirelessly. And I'm still a big fan of that OLED screen as well which is dinky enough to keep those full HD plus visuals looking razor sharp. I've comfortably enjoyed all manner of Netflix and Disney Plus shenanigans on this wee beastie, relishing the razor sharp contrast and those poppy colours. And one more benefit of the Pixel 5 over the Pixel 4 a 5G is the 90Hz display refresh rate just makes everything buttery smooth. It really is a miss on those cheaper pixels. I've got to say, it's like a big old performance boost. And speaking of performance, slaps himself on the back in congratulations over a frankly stunning segue. The Pixel 5 is powered by the Snapdragon 765G chipset rather than the fresher and meatier Snapdragon 800 series chips that you'll get on a lot of mid-range rivals such as the Poco F3, Oppo's Find X3 Neo, Yada yada. So even though you got full 5G connectivity here and a respectable 8 gigs of RAM, there's no denying that the Pixel 5 has fallen behind a lot of the competition around this price point and cheaper when it comes to sheer grunt. Do not be put off though because the Pixel 5's everyday running is still absolutely flawless beyond the heating issues of course. And if you want a game, no worries at all. Call of Duty Mobile still plays with a maxed out frame rate on the high detail settings with not a judder in sight, while the compact screen is responsive enough to give you a fighting chance. And even Genshin Impact will run quite nicely at that medium detail settings with the Pixel not heating up over a longish session. And yeah sure, true dedicated gamers will probably prefer a slightly more spacious screen but I had absolutely no issues on this 6 inch blower. And I found the 4000 milliamp battery in the Pixel 5 still delivers on the whole as well, although really demanding power users will probably want to look elsewhere. I found most days I ended with around sort of 10 to 15% uh, juice left in the tank. That's with around five to six hours of screen on time, plenty of audio streaming in the background, all that good stuff. But if you're gonna be doing a lot of Skyping or Zooming or playing a lot of the likes of Call of Duty, then you probably will have to give it a brief recharge before you hit the hair. And of course, if that adaptive charging feature does the trick, then you shouldn't see any degradation anytime soon. Sadly, the 80 watt charging speeds on the Pixel 5 are kind of measly these days, especially as a lot of budget smartphones come with like 33 watt fast charging, but at least you do get wireless charging support here on the Pixel 5. Hip hip hooray. Now one feature of the Pixel 5 that I really shouldn't have to sell you on at all is the camera setup. Pixels are still hands down among the very best smartphones for capturing great looking photos of whatever you want with bugger all effort. And what you get here on the Pixel 5 is essentially the same camera hardware setup as the cheaper Pixel 4a 5G, namely a 12.2 megapixel primary sensor with built-in optical image stabilization backed up by a secondary 16 megapixel ultra wide angle lens. In full auto mode, you'll get natural looking results in almost any conditions, even when the light is working against you. And even if you're shooting against a sunny sky, which occasionally does happen here in Blighty, all you've got to do is have a fiddle of that dual brightness slider and you are sorted. The only time you'll need to swap modes is when the light is all but gone, where the night mode can still produce bright shots with impressively realistic colours. Although more often than not, the Pixel 5 will actually swap to that night mode for you when it's just on the standard auto settings, so you don't even have to think about it. And yeah, that ultra wide angle lens isn't as good as what you'll find on more premium handsets like the Oppo Find X3 Pro, but the likes of the colour accuracy aren't compromised, which is definitely a relief. I know you still don't get a proper dedicated Pro mode here on the Pixel 5, and to be honest, you won't really need one. The video chops here on the Pixel 5 aren't as flexible as some rivals like Sony's Xperia 5 Mark II or the Nokia 8. It is a very straightforward setup, allowing you to shoot 4K home movies in 30 or 60 frames per second. But once again, the Pixel spaffs out natural looking results with no effort. The focus is spot on, audio pickup is clear, and it's really hard to complain. And of course, that 8 megapixel selfie shooter is absolutely fine as well. Same thing again, you'll get natural looking snaps, even in quite tricky conditions. Although the night sight still makes me look like some sort of creature of the damned, no matter how hard I try to appear normal and non-threatening. And that in a nutshell is what I think of Google's Pixel 5 flagship smartphone a full half a year after it was originally launched. And I do still really enjoy returning to it. I love the compact form factor, the very easy to get grips with camera tech, the nice stock Android experience which has been improved all of the time. But man oh man, it's still just that little bit too expensive at 600 quid. You don't quite have the specs to match up with that, especially as you've got the likes of the Poco F3, which boasts a better Snapdragon chipset for about half the price of this thing. So as here, unless you're completely sold on the likes of the water resistance or the wireless charging, then you know save a bit of money and just get the Pixel 4 or 5G, which sports a similar compact form factor, not quite as svelte, unfortunately. And of course, the same great camera tech. But if the Pixel 5 drops in prices, it hopefully will soon. Quid's in.
So that's what I think, but if you guys have been using the Pixel 5 as well, it'd be great to hear your own personal experiences down in the comments below. Have you been having the same issues with overheating uh, when any kind of sunlight strikes this thing? It really is like the vampire of smartphones. And for more of the latest, greatest tech, please do pop subscribe, ding that notifications bell, and have yourselves a fantastic rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.